Uh, welcome everyone to Charts Free webinar series. Today we have Kathleen Wood presenting on Time to Reboot, Training's Growing Role in the Hospitality Business Success. Welcome Kathleen. Well, Tara, thank you so much. Thanks for the introduction and thanks everyone for your time today. And Tara, I do have to say this though. Thank you and the whole chart team for continuing to keep us all connected to, to, so we can learn, share, and grow together. And today really is about growth. I think there's amazing growth opportunities for trainers and training as we all navigate this new marketplace that, we're, that we've been in and we're gonna to continue to be in. And that's why today's webinar is called Time to Reboot. Training's growing role in hospitality business success. And I really want to focus in on two key areas today. First, I want to focus in on your role as the trainer and the leading of training for your business. And then second, I want to share with you potentially a new vision for success for training, but most assuredly, three key ingredients for what that vision must include for businesses to move forward successfully. Now, as we go through our time together today, I thought it'd be important for me to share just a little bit more about my background so you have context for, you know, my insights, my ideas, my, obviously my perspectives, but also the practical resources and solutions I'm going to share with you. So let me begin with just a little bit about my background. Like many in the hospitality industry, I started out in operations. I loved operations. I loved everything about it, whether it was full service, fast food, B&I, airport concessions, or hotels. I obviously was one of the one in 12 people in the United States that worked at McDonald's at some point in my career. And I loved that experience as well. But as I transitioned out of operations, I went to work at the time for an organization that very few people had never heard of, which was called the Educational Foundation of the National Restaurant Association. And for over six years, I was responsible for leading the sales and marketing of an amazing product called ServeSafe. Back then, we were out there trying to convince people why food safety was important. Today, it's obviously the industry standard for food safety and sanitation. I transitioned from the Educational Foundation to another great opportunity to do a lead a strategic initiative for TGI Fridays. And here I was responsible for the development of TGI Fridays in airports, stadiums, and arenas. And again, this was another great opportunity to start a brand new initiative. Back then, there weren't a lot of restaurants in airports. And today, when I go through airports, I do smile when I see a TGI Fridays. But one of the things I learned in the first half of my career was as much as I enjoyed these new, exciting strategic initiatives, that climbing a corporate ladder really wasn't going to be in my career path. But building business ladders was. So almost two decades ago, I started Kathleen Wood Partners, a growth strategy firm truly dedicated on helping leaders identify where they are, where they want to go, and then charting the most effective path for productivity and profitability as they reach their next destination. I was very fortunate when I started my consulting career to have one of my first clients be Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers, back when there were only two Raising Cane's in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I had the amazing opportunity to work with Todd Graves and his wonderful team for almost six years as a consultant as the foundation for Raising Cane's was being developed. I also had an awesome opportunity to serve as the president and COO of Raising Cane's before, during, and after Hurricane Katrina, and also during the first phase of Raising Cane's growth from a $24 million company to a $100 million company. Today, I just love watching Raising Cane's and Todd Graves and his team at over 500 restaurants truly leading the way in best practices of people, culture, and community. Their work in our world today is one that is truly to be admired and most assuredly to be followed for the great care that they're taking of everyone in their, in their community and in their team member community as well. I transitioned from Raising Cane's back to my love, you know, consulting, and I continue to work with businesses across the United States and internationally in areas of growth strategy, brand optimization, and leadership development. About seven years ago, though, after building many businesses for so many great people, uh, my sister Sue, my niece Jen, and I decided that we were going to build a business for ourselves. And we developed our concept, Suzy Swirl. And that's where I'm actually zooming in from today, Suzy Swirl, where we offer amazing, craveable yogurts, sorbettos, and gelatos. And just this past year, we rolled out our brand new product line, which is an amazing combination of great cocktails, good probiotics swirled with a little alcohol to make a delicious spiked pint that we call Susie Swirl Spirits. And let me just tell you, some days those spirits come in super handy as we're kind of all navigating through this dynamic marketplace. But the one 
One thing I want to mention in all of this journey is all the way back to my days in the Educational Foundation, CHART has been a very special and important part of my journey. I have made lifelong friends, had amazing experiences, and even had the opportunity to serve as the president of the association many years ago. So it really does make me so excited today to be able to spend this time with the best and the brightest in the hospitality industry as we talk about you know, training's amazing opportunity to reboot. So what do we know right now? We know that the landscape has certainly changed. I mean, if you're like me, you are getting bombarded with statistics, stories, you know, uh, examples, daily briefings, you know, breaking news stories about the crisis. The crisis, the crisis, the crisis. It, it creates intensity, it creates stress, it creates anxiety, and a whole lot of range of emotions. It's like every day we are on this crazy roller coaster. And I feel that way, you know, some days too, because as I look at it as a consultant, I totally see the best practices that are out there. But as an owner operator, I totally feel the ups and the downs and all arounds with this. But the other thing that I see is that there has also been amazing opportunities that have come from this. You know, opportunities for innovation, ingenuity, you know, new ideas, pivoting, complete brands to a whole new business model. And we've also seen the advent of new ways for us to connect, to share, and to grow. And to me, I think that's one of the, in crisis, that's one of the exciting things about the opportunities that we're seeing. I love what John F. Kennedy said in the 1960s when he said, you know what, beware of the dangers of crisis, but be also be open to the opportunities. And I truly do believe right now, for the first time in a very, very long time that I can remember, that this is an amazing time for opportunities for trainers and training in general, because our world needs great trainers, as it always has, but it also needs those training systems to support everyone as we navigate to the next normal. But one of the things that I get asked all the time is this, hey, Kathleen, you know, when you think about the future, what do you think that's gonna look like? And I wish I had that crystal ball to give that answer, because trust me, that would be a whole nother business in and of itself. But what I do know for a fact that as we move forward in this, that there will be a new currency in our COVID-19 marketplace. And that currency is gonna be the currency of confidence. We are seeing this played out right now. And this confidence is truly gonna be derived from how confident are your team members in their safety? How confident are your customers in the safety when they're experiencing your, your product or brand? And then how does that confidence translate to supporting your business stability so that you could build that foundation for sustainability and ultimately for success. So as we think about it's time to reboot, I want to kind of maybe point this amazing opportunity out. If we really do believe that confidence from team safety, customer safety, and business stability is the currency in a competitive dynamic marketplace going forward, then I would tell you that I believe that this is one of training's greatest opportunities. It truly is a golden opportunity. And I just want you to think back. When I think back over the last four decades of being in the hospitality industry, here's a couple of things I know about training. One is when times get tough, training gets cut. When we have an economic downturn, training gets cut. When we have, you know, uh, reallocations of resources, typically training gets cut. When we have something happening, a new opportunity in business, and we need, you know, more resources, more headcounts, training gets cut. You know, when we need to maybe look at our quarterly filings and reports, training gets cut. Now, I'm not saying that that's, you know, that training doesn't get some good things too, but I will tell you that if you look historically, one of the first things that gets cut when things get tense is training. And we all know as being trainers and being in training that really it's kind of, that's not the first place to cut, but it typically ends up being that place. I think for the first time in my lifetime of being in hospitality, that this is the time where training won't be cut. In fact, I believe that training will be more important than it ever has been before. That's why I truly believe that this is training's golden opportunity to get in it and win it, not just for yourselves or your team, but for your business, for your community, and for your customers. 
This is training's time. And I don't know if we'll ever have another time like this. I pray we never do, but I do know this, why we're in this time and we'll be in this time for a while, that this is where training's got this golden opportunity to really re reboot, reset, and reposition itself as the essential part of business success that it's always been and most assuredly will be as we move forward. So I wanna take a moment and just stop and talk just a little bit about your role as a training leader. When I start to think about this golden opportunity, it always does start for me with the leader. And when I think about your golden opportunity right now, look, I feel it's like this. You're already a leader, but this is your opportunity to take a greater leadership role in your team and your business. This is an opportunity, you've always had a voice, but now amplify that voice. Because one of the things I know about trainers and all these years being associated with Chart is this, when all those cuts were being made, trainers, whoo, they picked up some superpowers. They picked up superpowers to know how to operate in a lean, with a lean budget, with a lean team, and still deliver amazing results. You know, so this is your time as a leader with your voice to truly come to the table with your superpowers and show your agility, your flexibility, and your resourcefulness. Because in a dynamic marketplace, these are kind of skill sets that we need. And if I just put this in practical connotations for a moment, think about this for just one second. Four months ago, how many of you had written guidelines for how to wear a mask? I don't, you know, if you did, you were way ahead of the curve. If, you, if you're like most, we weren't even thinking that, you know, hey, uh, as we start 2020, I, you know, I really hope that masks become part of our uniform. I don't know too many people that were thinking that way, but I do know this, in a very small window of time, we have all figured out how to be agile, flexible, and resourceful to put together the process and procedures for us to properly wear masks, not only why we're in our work environment, but also why we're dealing with customers outside of our environment as well. And that's why I think that this is a golden opportunity to flex those skills that you've always had. And I also think it's a golden opportunity as a leader, as you amplify your voice, to look for new and innovative ways to collaborate that allow you to be faster than you've ever been and also to provide practical solutions. I think trainers have always provided practical solutions. I also think that trainers have another secret superpower of being super fast. And as we really think about this dynamic place right now, you know, with different states having different requirements, I mean, the idea of collaborating with everyone is so significant. The other, the other part of the equation is really having that speed. Because think about what's happening in some of the states right now. Two weeks ago, dining rooms weren't gonna be open. Then suddenly on a Friday, we find out, woo, all the dining rooms are, let's open the dining rooms with 25% capacity. All right, how do we have, the, is our training system ready? Can we get them the information? What other guidelines have been given? How do we provide those practical solutions? So as you think about your role, I truly wanna encourage you to think about your golden opportunity right now to reboot, reset, and reposition yourself, your team, and training's role with inside your business. And as you're thinking about that, I wanna add this caveat as well. The world is moving super fast. And for anyone that's returned to work, I am sure that some days it's like a fire hose coming at your face full on with all this water, right? And it's tough because you're running and you're running. Totally get that. If you haven't returned to work, you know, then I want you to think about this. You could be returning to that environment too. So as you're really thinking about a reboot of your leadership and your approach in your business. I want you to really kind of think about it from this mantra, progress versus perfection. You know, we have been conditioned sometimes in training to make sure that everything we do is perfect and we can report on its outcomes very specifically. But in this dynamic environment, and it's constantly changing, we need to develop, you know, collaborate, develop tools quickly, develop solutions that can be easily executed. And understand that, you know, we still need it to be accurate, we still need it to be correct, but in terms of it being 100% perfect in its look and feel, that may not be part of our, you know, equation at this moment. Because what we use today may not be what we use a month from now. And what we use today may not be what we use even next week sometimes. 
But the key is to get the information, to get the solutions out there as it is needed. And the more we can do that, the more proactive we can be in anticipating future needs. And I think the second thing to think about is that I believe for the next several months in the foreseeable future that if I'm in training, I've got to think about this the same way that the operator is. Like we're in a constant state of new opening. You know, what worked yesterday, whoo, it worked today, but it may not work again. So we've got to be in that continuous state. And this is where I think trainer superpowers of being agile, flexible, resourceful, really rise to the occasion. So I just want to encourage you to do what you've always done and be the very best at what you do, but most assuredly lift your leadership, raise your voice, and really get in there because this is training's golden opportunity to help not only support everyone, but also to support the sustainability of the business or the company that you work for. Now, as we kind of move from your leadership, I want to talk about the other opportunity that your leadership also gets in this new dynamic marketplace. And to me, it's a reboot of the vision of success that you have for training within your business. And specifically, in, from my perspective, I think there's three critical ingredients here. And the first ingredient that I want to really look at is this one. If we go back to the idea that confidence is the currency for success, competitive differentiation, and long-term stability, then I want to look first and foremost at building a confidence framework for safety. This is for your team and your customers' confidence. Now, I realize that there are so many guidelines out there, and it's so funny at some points because there's so many, and they're all so close, but then when we need that one specific answer, we can't seem to find it. And, you know, and it's kind of like, okay, we have everything except for this one final piece. So here's what I'd like to suggest. There are so many great guidelines out there, and I believe that that is where the starting point has to be. Look at those guidelines on a federal, on a state, on a local, even on a municipality level. But look at those guidelines and really identify the guidelines that help you and your business and team stay in compliance. That to me is a fundamental that will always be a part of our businesses going forward. And we're used to compliance guidelines. We've had them for food safety for years. We've had them for OSHA for years. This is now a different type of guideline but it's an essential one that we have to continue to envelope into our thinking. And then once you've identified those compliance guidelines, the next question is how do these fit into your operational standards? And then it's the translation to, okay, so what does this mean to operations? And then as we think about that collaborating with our operators, how do we then translate that into our training systems? Now, historically, that's been an amazing model for us. And from that model, we have always measured what's been our training success, what's our operational success, what's our business success. But as we move forward to the next new normal, we're gonna to have to also now filter it through of, is what, is what we're doing building confidence for our team members, for our customers? And is that confidence translating to stability? Now, I'm gonna give you the most, uh, probably the most recent example of where this has not necessarily played out successfully. If you've been watching any of the news over the last weekend, you keep, like me, I keep seeing these videos of store of restaurants where it, they're totally crowded, completely packed, people are not wearing masks, people are not social distancing, people are not doing anything that would imply that there is any level of confidence both by the team member or the customer that things are really going you know, properly in that business. Now, somebody could say, hey, look, you know, some PR is better than no PR. And I'm like, okay, I, I've never really subscribed to that, but I'll most assuredly do not subscribe to that today because you don't want your business up on national news as the place that's packed with people not following, you know, safety protocols. You want your business to be on national news or local news because of everything you're doing to protect your team and your customers, because that's what protects your brand reputation. So to me, really thinking about a new vision of success as you reboot that. Part of it is, is building in the confidence for the of safety and then also translating that to ensure that it's being executed so that you have long-term business stability and sustainability. So one of the questions that I get asked 
when I talk about the confidence framework for safety is this, you know, Kathleen, totally get it conceptually, but how does that really start? How do I apply that in what I'm doing every day? And for this, I think there's some wonderful, amazing tools that trainers have right there in their toolkit. So let me share those with you. First, I believe that this is an amazing time to do a SWOT analysis on your training ecosystem. And specifically, I'd like to talk about your training systems and then how do you map out team member safety and customer safety in your systems? The first thing I wanna say is this is one thing I've been saying to my clients and to people that I've been in discussions with is one of the things that this crisis has allowed us to do is to really take a look at our current systems. And I love the SWAT, you know, it's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So as you think about your training system, and it's the system, the materials, how it gets rolled out, how it gets executed, how it gets measured. When you look at that system, what are the strengths that you want to keep building on? What are the weaknesses that this is your opportunity that if they are not essential, whew, let them go. No need to keep trying to bring them along if they're not going to work. And then where are your opportunities to innovate, to invigorate, and in some cases to pivot from what you've always done? And then last, the threats, we know them. We're bombarded by them. We're going to continue to fight an invisible virus. We're going to continue to have, you know, government and government regulations. We're going to continue to deal with a consumer confidence level that's going to go up and down. And we're going to continue to deal, deal with an uncertainty of the virus as more places open. Does the virus surge? Does the virus spike? Does the virus go down? What does that look like? And what does that mean to us? So we will always have this as a constant until some future point in time. But for the immediate future, this is gonna be a constant within our world. So I think it's a great time to kind of look at the training system through, your, you know, through a SWOT analysis so that you can go back to being, if you're not there, a lean, agile, flexible system that can move and shift with the dynamics of our marketplace. That's the first tool in the toolkit that I know many trainers have. But the second tool in the toolkit is this one, team member safety mapping. I get asked all the time, Kathleen, hey, what, what, what should we do? I heard that we should have this, we should do this, we should do this. This is where I think all of those amazing resources for compliance guidelines are going to come into play. Because one of the things that I think is most important is to map out your team member safety. I'm using a very simple tool here called the life cycle of an employee. There are 10 discrete steps that an employee goes through you know, in terms of their life cycle experience with any business. Of course, everyone always reminds me that there's a number 11 called, you know, separation or termination. And I'm just trying to keep it positive today. So from that perspective, um, I will just say that I left that one off for, for purposes of positivity right now. But one thing that I really want to focus in on is this. You lay out your team member life cycle, you know, experience. And then from there, what I suggest to people is, Let's lay down the, the vertical and look at what are the visual cues, what are the interactive cues, and what are the experiential cues that your team member is going through with every step of this life cycle. So let's do a quick role play on this. Let's say that we have a new employee coming for an interview. The first thing we have to ask ourselves are, you know, what are our policies, procedures, and practices and guidelines for interview in a COVID-19 marketplace? So the first thing we ask is, what are the visual things that we would like that employee to see as they come for their interview? Do we have physical barriers? Do we have signs? What's the appearance of our team member who's conducting the interview? Those all are visual cues that inspire confidence for that potential new hire. Second, we've got to ask ourselves, what, what is the interactive cues for this person coming for the interview? And from there, we want to look at what is, our, you know, what is our team member asking? You know, where are they having the interview? What are they talking about relative to our product and what we do to keep things, our business safe? And where are they in our facility so that they have different cues to see the policies and practices that we are employing to keep our facility safe? And then last, as we think about that interview experience, what is that new hire, potential new hire experiencing in the interview relative to the questions we're talking about to service, ordering, or even our packaging guidelines and the practices, policies, and procedures we're using for quality and brand integrity? 
if you really think about this, when that new hire, potential new hire leaves the interview, what is their confidence level in your ability to keep them safe? I'm gonna tell you, it's gonna be high because they're like, my goodness, they really took care of it. And when they go home and tell the people that they're sheltered in with about their experience, what do you think that does to the confidence of those people that are connected with, not only for the safety of the person they love in your business, but also their confidence as being a customer for your business. Now, all, everyone always says, Kathleen, this seems like a lot to do. And I always come back with the idea that, look, it's just one page. It's one page. And you probably know most of these ideas right now. But the power of mapping it out gives you three amazing benefits. First, you actually do get to see your entire system on one page. And from looking at it on one page, you can quickly identify the gaps that you really have to kind of fill in or that you need to find the answers for, or you at least need to find you know, a solution for today with. Second, you're gonna be able to really align your training systems to this mapping so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel each time something changes in the environment. You're setting your foundation and you're gonna be able to build and adjust from it. And third, you are sending a powerful message to new hires that you're looking to bring into your business and those that are currently in your business, you are sending a powerful message to them about how important their safety is. I believe that this is one of the greatest tools that we all have available for us as we especially continue to navigate into our next new normal. Now, the other question I get is, Kathleen, once we've kind of figured this out, how do we relate that then to training? And I just love that question because in my mind, you're using the same kind of cues. What are the visual cues? What are the interactive cues? And what are those experiential cues? But now we're gonna lay it down into training protocols. What's our safety orientation looking like? What are our arrival procedures? What are our hand washing, bathroom, et cetera, et cetera. So what I would say to you is, as you think about your training system, how do you start to then layer in team member safety mapping? You don't have to throw everything you've ever done away, but now it's about truly adjusting it in a way that keeps it agile, flexible, and most assuredly inspiring confidence for your team members and your customers. So the last piece I wanna share with team member safety is this, and this was a great slide uh, from a presentation that US Foods did. And one of the things that they said, and I think this is such an important point for trainers, is this idea that you know, we have to visualize how all this is gonna work in the operations. And I love this slide first because, you know, they did a great job. Before COVID-19, we talked about front of the house team members and we talked about back of the house. But after COVID-19, we're now talking about customer engagement team members, restaurant safety team members, and back of the house team members. And I know that if you're in the hotel and lodging industry, that you're looking at it the same way. You know, we have new roles, new responsibilities, and all of those roles and responsibilities requires new or adjusted training materials to help them be successful in execution. So that's team member safety. Now let's get to the other part of the equation, customer safety. So again, simple tool, one page, right? All I'm basically doing here is mapping out what the customer's journey looks like. So if you're in quick service, if you're doing curbside, or if you're doing delivery, if you're in hotels, if you're in lodging, if you're in another type of service sector, my first recommendation to you is lay out the customer journey, whatever it looks like. And then as you lay out that customer journey, here's the thing. It's again, visual cues, interactive cues, and experiential cues. And as you're filling those boxes out, you're literally writing in there, what are your policies? What are your procedures? What are your practices? What are the tools and resources that you have available so that your customer, you know, when, upon arrival, or even watching you on social media, has confidence that you are doing everything possible to keep them, their family, and your team members safe? Now, I want to say this about the customer safety map. Consumer confidence is this equivalent to team member confidence. Team member confidence is important for attra attracting and retaining team members. And customer confidence is very important 
for one, attracting new customers, two, maintaining loyalty with existing customers, and three, increasing frequency. So imagine this, you have a stable team of team members all working diligently, but you also have a customer base that really does become your brand ambassadors for their experiences with your restaurant. We used to love those reviews of customer experiences at hotels and restaurants because they write all the glowing things that happened. Well, we still want them writing those reviews and we know now that they will include in those reviews, you know, their experience relative to how safe and your procedures were in terms of their confidence to come there and return there. So this again is another big benefit for business stability. Now I'd like to share with you one other slide from US Foods because I thought again, it did an excellent job of thinking about your physical building. It's really about zoning out those areas of the pre-arrival, the entry, exit, the dining room, and you know even the restroom. And what are your policies, procedures, and practices in each one of those areas to inspire confidence with your customers? So as you start to think about a new vision for success for training, I'd like you to think about it first with your role. Two, think about it in terms of you know, that confidence framework for safety. And then three, do your SWOT analysis, your customer mapping, your team member mapping for safety. Because at the end of the day, it's that structure that you build now. It will hold you as we continue to navigate the ups and downs of the marketplace. Now, the other thing that I think is an amazing opportunity for trainers right now is this, a new world of metrics. You know, when COVID-19 hit, my dear friend and colleague, Jamie Griffin, we've known each other all the way back to Raising Cane's together, and we have a joint consulting company called Grow Wisely. Jamie calls and we both, you know, and I call Jamie and we both start talking and we're like, what could we do right now to help the industry? What, what could we develop right now to help people? And we developed this guide called the Re-Restaurant 2020, the Operator's Path to the Next New Normal. And in this, we broke it out into four distinct phases, restore, resolve, resilience, and return. And under each one of those phases, we kind of shared how to lead, plan, and act. This was our gift to the industry. There's no sales, no strings. It was just something that we felt people would need. And what we found is it works great for restaurants, it works great for retail, it works great for hotel and lodging. So it's a great guide and you'll get information about that at the end, but please consider it another resource and our gift to everyone who's in there each and every day trying to really pick our industry back up. But I want to share with you a slide from it that I think could be a powerful new tool for trainers. You know, for many years, trainers were, you know, if you really think about metrics, a lot of the metrics were about how many people did we train? What was the cost of the training? How long did the training take? How much did the materials cost? What was our return on investment? You know, what was their retention? What was the longevity? You know, all of these amazing metrics. I think those metrics are equally important today, if not more important today, especially with the dynamic workforce that we're gonna have as we continue to move on. So one of the things that I think would be a great tool to add to a trainer's toolkit is this slide right here the stability scorecard. Jamie and I really looked at this from three perspectives. One, what does stability look like? Two, how long does stability take? And three, how will you know that you're stable and you're on to the next level of growth and development? And to me, from a trainer's perspective, this is an amazing scorecard to see the impact that you and your team are having in your business. Think about this, what does stability look like? Do you have the best of the best team? I'm confident you all have metrics for what the best of the best team looks like. But now let's marry that with operations. Is safety and cleanliness our, num our number one priority? How are we, what's the response from our operators, from our customers relative to that? And if we really want to measure how confident our customers are, then we can go over to the financial column and say, are our sales rising? Are they coming back? Are they building? Are they consistent? I love this first row because in my mind, as a business gets to this part, that business is moving from survival to thriving. And I think that that business that can move from survival to thriving 
in the core of it is an amazing trainer with an amazing training system. And then you have to ask your question, you know, how long will it take for us to get to st stability? And I think that as you think about this from a training perspective, it's when we've got those higher levels of accountability and we're seeing turnover going down. It's when we start to see consistency in operations, whether that's food quality, service quality, or just overall safety, cleanliness. But we're definitely starting to see predictable results. And we're also starting to see that we can manage our costs and we can start to make ourselves cash positive. And last, how do you know when you're going to adjust? And this is why if I come back to the you know, team member mapping and the customer mapping. You know, you've built that solid foundation and now you get to adjust a bit because now as the team becomes more stabilized, we can add more development to their, to their journey. We can add more to how we can uptick our service standards, our quality standards, our food standards. And we can help our business because the increasing sales and the increasing efficiency and effectiveness of our team helps us to create more positive cash flow to reduce debt. If this is not a training, a, a scorecard that you've ever used before in training, I want to really encourage you to use this scorecard because it really does reflect the impact of trainers and training in a business. And if we go all the way back to the reboot of your you as the leader, this is an amazing thing to bring as a leader to raise your voice about and to certainly be proud of the impact you are making each and every day. You know, as we kind of start to think about this, I truly, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna end where I started. This really is your time. It is truly your golden opportunity. I believe that training has always needed a seat at the table. They've always needed the voice at the table because it's a core essential part of successful businesses. And now more than ever, your voice, your leadership, your systems, and your framework of safety is an essential, not only for today, but as we move forward into the next part of all of our journeys. Yes, there is a lot of uncertainty out there. Yes, there are still a lot of questions that need to be answered, but you know what? Trainers, whew, resourceful, you know, they're, you know, just so resourceful. So leverage your superpowers to make this not just one moment in time, but leverage it so that you reset, reboot where training goes for the rest of time. Don't let the next several generations have to feel like, you know, training is the first thing that's cut. Let them know that training is the first seat at the table at every table because of the significance and impact that it brings to business each and every day. Your work is important, your leadership is needed, and your training systems are truly going to be an essential ingredient for everyone's success as we continue to navigate. So I want to bring it home with this great with this great quote because I just think this is so awesome. You know what you know what's been the secret in chart for all these years is that the secret has always been you know the chart members it's always been you and your leadership and that secret is still the secret ingredient all these years later but i want you to think about this for a moment abraham lincoln in the 1860s said the best way to create your future the best way to predict your future is to create it now look, Abraham Lincoln was dealing with a lot of things back then too. He was actually trying to reunite the United States after the Civil War. So I want you to think about it. He had a lot going on too, but he even then, almost you know, 200 years ago, understood that we all have the power within us to create our future. And I want you to think about this today. It's really your time to reboot your leadership, reboot your vision of success, but also it's your time to take this opportunity and make the choice. A choice that only you can make, but a choice that really does, it, that really is open with so many opportunities for forward success, not only for yourself, but for your team and most assuredly for your business. So I want you just to think for a moment about the choice you get to make because you know it's a great one and it's a choice that's always been there, but now, it's a choice that truly is one that can change the next generations of trainers to come. I wanna thank you for what you're doing each and every day because it is very important work. And I also wanna share with you just a few resources here. 
you know, uh, the Illinois Hotel and Lodging Association's got a great resource for lodging. The, and I have our re restaurant guide, you know, you can download it for free there. The Center for Disease Control has obviously guidelines that they are changing on a regular basis. The National Restaurant Association has done a great job in providing tools and resources. You know, clearly you all know about chart and I would tell you to keep using all the resources of chart. So many powerful things that can be helpful right now. And then feel free to reach out to myself or you know, feel free to follow me at Suzy Swirl because everything that I've been speaking to today is everything we're doing each and every day at Suzy Swirl as we continue to ride in this roller coaster as well. So again, I thank you for your time. I thank you for everything you're doing each and every day. And I wish you continued great health, success, and most assuredly, achieving this moment in time as your golden opportunity to reboot, reset, and change the trajectory of training for all of us. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Kathleen. I'm going to, um, if anyone has any questions, you're free to send them in on the side. For the most part, a lot of the people um, that made comments on the side are just comments, um, which we'll look at afterwards and, and respond to um, one by one. But the only question that came in um, for the group was, um, are you seeing, are you suggesting that people start um, their training, training programs from scratch? Oh, no. oh, yeah, great question. And I'll be honest with you, no. I think right now, they're, they're great. You know, you've, done, you've got, achieved a lot of success with them. But what I am suggesting is to do that SWOT analysis and really see a bit more, make it a lot more flexible and agile, and at the same time, layer in the customer safety and team member safety mapping into that so that you're building a solid foundation of not only core competencies, but also policies, practices, and procedures around building confidence, you know, in safety and safety procedures. Uh, okay, we've got another question that just came in. What best practices or insight can you give regarding training in the new normal when so much of the restaurant industry is shoulder to shoulder? How do you, you balance social distancing with the hands-on demonstration between a trainer and trainee and maintain that confidence that we care about their safety? Yeah, you know what? This to me, another great question, by the way. So a couple things for me on this. One is, technology is a great one. And depending on how much space you have, you know, one of the things that I think we've learned from chefs through the years is how to do demonstration kitchens. So I think if we can look at, you know, technology, demonstration kitchens, you know, also using things like Zoom, to do some of the you know, uh, knowledge exchange. And then some of the more hands-on things, you know, can we look at different ways with visual aids, with job aids, and then with social distancing coaching to help individuals kind of learn you know, specific hands-on skills. Uh, okay, and that's all we have. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Hope to see you on a future webinar. And Kathleen, once again, thank you so much for, for doing this for us. Thank you, Taryn. Good luck and best wishes to everyone. Thank you.